It's not anyone else know. How long does it take to go to sleep? You got to see that. Thank you. I appreciate it. Anybody know how long it takes to go to sleep? When you look lie in bed, your head sitting on the pillow, how long do you think? Five minutes. Five minutes. Ooh, very close. Very, very close. You might want to hang on. You might, you know. What, you say with a three? No, no, not three. Get a little further away. What do you think, Dave? Two minutes? No, a little bit more. Just call it out. Seven. Who said seven? Very good job. Seven minutes. The average person takes about seven minutes to go to sleep before they go unconscious. Very good. I should have some prizes. All right, another question for you. What is the only mammal that cannot jump? What do you think, Veronica? What's the only mammal that does not jump? That is correct. Good job, man in the brown shirt. The answer is the elephant. The elephant is the only mammal on planet Earth today that does not jump. Another question, just one more, before we go into the paint board here. What is the most common cookie, the most popular cookie in the United States in the whole world today? Which, who said chocolate chip? Is that you? I'm sorry, that's not the right answer. What did you say, Aaron, what did you say? Oreo, good job, good job, Aaron. Very good job. Well, these are different problems that we have that we can solve, use our mind, use our brain, and come up with an answer, come up with a solution, come up with a conclusion. But we'll have a problem here to consider. And the question is this, in regards to these one, two, three, four dots, we want to be able to find a way. We're going to have a, a problem here. I want some of you guys to use your head, try to find a way that we can connect all four dots using three straight lines, not having any opening. Let me say that again because it's a little confusing. But we can find a way to connect all four dots, use three straight lines, and have no openings. That might not make sense right now, but it'll make sense as we go on. Now, there's different problems that we encounter in our day-to-day -day life. Now, what's the first way as you encounter a problem that you answer, um, as you encounter a problem, how do you get an answer? What, what do you think is the first thing you do when you encounter a problem? Perhaps the ceiling fan stops working or the, the, roof's, a little, the roof's a little faulty. Maybe the, the, the sink's a little, what do you think, sir? When, 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 you're, when your faucet's not working, what's the first thing you do to try to fix it? Close it, but who do you go to? Oh, that's a good conclusion, but first, I'll say, before you even call the plumber, sometimes you try to do, you try to have someone try to help you fix it. And it's kind of what you're doing right now, trying to figure out the solution for the, for the problem. You know what that says? Cell, that's right. Right now, you guys are thinking in your mind a way to figure out this problem right here. Four dots, using three straight lines, without having any openings. And yourself, you could ask yourself, you know, how can I how can I make a solution to this problem? I have this problem, I'm encountering this problem. How can I find a possible solution? You know what you might say? Well, use the X method. Well, let's try that out. Let's see how that works out. We'll use the X method. That is the X method. And look what we have. We have connected all four dots. We have used three straight lines, but the problem is this. One, two, three. Three, there are three openings. Well, we haven't been able to answer our, our problem. And so we'll go, after we try to figure out the problem ourselves, what's the next thing that we would do to try to solve our problem when we encounter a problem? What do you think, Vicky over there? Not. Well, not just yet, but what's a, what's a preliminary thing that we would do? Uh, before the plumber. A friend. A friend, very good, you are very bright. I must say, a friend, that's right. That's right, you would ask a friend. Perhaps you have a friend who went to Moen University. He is a faucetologist. He is a professional to a certain extent of being able to solve this leaky faucet problem of yours. And he tells you, hey, I'm your friend. Let me give you some advice. Let me give you a suggestion. Why don't you use the Z method? Use the Z method to solve your problem. And he says, all right, I try out the Z method and look what you get. We have connected all four dots. We have used three straight lines, but we have a problem. We don't have zero openings. We have how many? That's right, one, two openings. Well, 
you've tried it yourself, you've asked a friend, you phoned a friend, and now you ask, well, I have a problem with the leaky faucet, what do I do next? What's the next possible logical conclusion? What do you think? A plumber, very good. It's called a professional. He didn't just go to Moen University. He's not just a faucetologist. He's a professor of faucetology. He has the ability to fix your faucet. He has the ability. He's a professor at Moen University. Now, having said that, I'm going to put down here. Everybody know what this says? Very good. He's a pro. <laughs> And the pro tells you, I mean, this guy is phenomenal. He has a reputation. He is known for his ability to fix your faucets. I think he'll have the ability to be able to tell you what method to be able to solve this enigma here. We can have connect four dots using three straight lines, have no open. You know what he tells you? He says, use the U. Use the U, go U. And so we'll use the U. And let's see what happens. And we're getting closer to solving the problem. We're getting very close. The U method has connected all four dots. It has used three straight lines, but the problem is there is still how many openings? Very good. One opening. Does anyone know the answer to this problem? You can just call it out because it's a shape. Anybody know? You connect all four dots here. Hexagon, very good try. That's not the right answer though. Connect all four dots, three straight lines, and no openings. Who said triangle? Good job. That's exactly right. You have to train your mind. You have to think outside the box. And so the answer is to use a triangle. That's exactly the answer. You use a triangle, you connect all four dots, four straight lines, and there's not one open. You see, there's problems that we encounter day to day that we have to think outside the box. Can you think of a problem right now in your life that you're not able to answer? There's certain problems that we encounter that we're not able to answer. Anybody know a problem that we can't answer? Well, I'll tell you one. In life, there's one question, problem, situation um, that we can't answer, and that is the question of death. That's one thing that we can't overcome. You can go to yourself and you ask, how can I overcome death? And all my logic and all my conscience, I, may be, I won't be able to conjure up a, an answer. I can go to a friend, I can go to a professional, maybe a clergyman, and, and, and they won't be able to, well, they may not be able to give me the answer. So what's the answer when it comes down to this question of death? We have to go to an individual. We have to think outside the box, one who exists outside the box. And you know who that is? That's right, that's God. God is one who exists outside the box. And He's done two things. He's number one told us what the problem is in regards to this problem of death, and He's given us the remedy of how to answer the problem. You see, the problem in regards to death is an issue of sin. A lot of people don't like to hear this word, but it's an issue of sin. And the Bible says the wages of sin is death. What causes us to die, what causes death in our life, is the fact that we're sinners. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every single person on this beach, every single person in Florida, in the United States, and all of the world, of every tribe, tongue, nation, people, multitude, the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every single person stands before a holy and righteous God. We're sinful. That's what the Bible says, that God has told us what the problem is of this issue with death. And He also has given us the solution. You see, God loved us so much that He sent His only begotten Son. And that Jesus Christ would come to this earth and He was a perfect man. He never sinned. And so that made Him an acceptable sacrifice to die for our sins. And the problem is this, the Bible says that our sins is so serious to God that it's punishable by death. The wrath of God abides on all men. And so what Jesus did 2,000 years ago upon the cross is that He died and His blood was shed for the forgiveness of our sins. That the perfect Lamb of God would take on and bridge the gap between us and God.